Hello everyone, welcome to Genki Dollar. Today we're going to cover the recent clashes between Armenia and Azerbaijan. There are a lot of official statements and expert opinions from both sides and from other countries as well. But I wanted to go further than that and talk to someone from the people and see how a regular Azerbaijani citizen feels about what's happening and get his opinion regarding the conflict. My guest today is Adnan Hussein from Azerbaijan. Hello Adnan. Thank you for accepting my invitation and welcome to my channel. Hello and thank you for inviting. It's good to be here and to have the opportunity to speak the truth. Now, before we get into the history of the conflict and we most certainly will, what is the current situation and what led to the recent escalation of the conflict? Clashes between Armenian and Azerbaijani troops broke out on July 12th after Armenia opened artillery fire on Azerbaijan positions stationed along the international border between the two South Caucasus nations. Uh, 12 Azerbaijani servicemen, including an army general and a civilian, have been killed since. Armenia's investigative committee said that its four servicemen were killed and 36 injured. But it is believed that the figures are likely to be much higher on the Armenian side, and the government is trying to hide it from its people in an attempt to cover up for the failed decision making. Well, you say that it's Armenia who started first. Armenia is blaming Azerbaijan. How will you comment on that? If Azerbaijan was to start any military action against Armenia, it would make sense for us to start it in the Nagorno-Karabakh area to liberate our occupied territories from the enemy. Throughout the history of our conflict with Armenia over the occupied territories of Nagorno-Karabakh, military clashes have been taking place only along the front lines within the internationally recognized borders of Azerbaijan and never on the state border between Armenia and Azerbaijan. The region of Tovuz, where the action is currently taking place, is about 200 kilometers north of Nagorno-Karabakh and is at the state border between the two countries. Azerbaijan has no military troops at that border, only border troops. Why do you think Armenia will want to start a new conflict? As you mentioned, do it on the state border of two countries and not in the already disputed Nagorno-Karabakh region. Although our territorial dispute has been going on for over 30 years, current escalation of the situation is not a continuation of the conflict, but rather an attempt to divert the attention from the ongoing problems that Armenia is currently facing within the country. The whole situation with COVID-19 and the failure to tackle it effectively has had seriously negative impact on Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan. His ratings have gone down drastically. A position both from the inside and the outside of the parliament has already gained momentum and the protests that have been taking place on the streets of Yerevan, despite the lockdown, only show that the population of Armenia has serious issues with the questions addressed to the current government that is under the rule of Prime Minister Pashinyan. Armenian people are concerned with the fact that the government has utterly failed to tackle the pandemic. In the first week of July, Armenia was ranked first in the world in the 14-day cumulative incidence of reported COVID-19 cases for 100,000 population. As of today, Armenia, with its population south of 3 million people, has over 35,000 registered COVID-19 cases. On the other hand, it seems to be cl crystal clear that Pashinyan is trying to use the pandemic to his advantage and as means to stop the ongoing protests with the country. State of emergency that has been declared in March has recently been extended to until August 12th. On the other hand, we're taking into consideration is that Pashinyan used to the declared state of emergency to his advantage by making new appointments within the forces of Armenia in an attempt to secure his positions by bringing in people loyal to his persona. Another reason being is that as a result of the far-sighted vision 
of the leader of our country, Azerbaijan, endeavors in and prospers from such vast international and multi-continental projects as the bakut bilisi Jehan oil pipeline, the bakut bilisi cars Railway, and the South Caucasus gas pipeline. And it is probably not a coincidence that the clashes have begun three months before Azerbaijan was to start heading to Europe through this gas pipeline. All the mentioned above projects pass through Tovo's region, putting these projects of vast importance at risk. This is no longer only an issue of the occupied territories of the Nagorno-Karabakh region, but also an issue of a provocation against our infrastructure that our country highly relies on and benefits from. This is a provocation against the future of our economy and the future of our children. One other possible goal worth mentioning is that Armenia is trying to shift the clashes from the internationally recognized territories of Azerbaijan in the Nagorno karabakh region to the state borders of Armenia is to attract the attention of the Collective Security Treaty Organization. I promise that we will be getting into the history of the conflict. In short, what can you tell our viewers about it? Armenia and Azerbaijan have been at odds for years over the Nagorno-Karabakh region, which is internationally recognized territory of Azerbaijan occupied by Armenia in the early 1990s. From 1991 and until 1993, Armenia and Azerbaijan fought a full-scale war that resulted in Armenia occupying 20% of Azerbaijan's sovereign territory, including the entire Nagorno-Karabakh region, where partial ethnic Armenian population lived side by side indigenous Azerbaijans and seven surrounding districts which had been populated exclusively by Azerbaijans. The war claimed the lives of 30,000 Azerbaijans and displayed 1 million Azerbaijanis from their homeland. In 1993, the United Nations Security Council adopted four resolutions demanding the immediate withdrawal of the occupying forces from Azerbaijani land and the return of internally displaced Azerbaijanis to their ancestral lands. All four legally binding documents go unfulfilled by Armenia to date. Since the early 1990s, the Minsk Group of Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, co-chaired by the United States, Russia, and France, spearheads international efforts for finding a durable solution to the conflict. Thank you for your time, and I wish your country to resolve this conflict in a soon time and in a peaceful manner. Once again, thank you for inviting me, and I also want to point out that Azerbaijan does not want war, and has always been loyal to and on the side of peaceful resolution of the conflict. But if the negotiations that have been going on for over 30 years and have yet not shown any result hit a dead end and the Armenian provocations continue to take place, we'll be left with no other choice other than to fight for what historically belongs to our people. Over 50,000 men signing up to join the country's armed forces in the past seven days shows how tired the Azerbaijani people are of Armenian aggression and of being deprived of what's rightfully theirs and that they are ready to fight to go back to where their roots come from. Thank you once again, Adnan. I appreciate your time and opinion. And for those of you watching, thank you and feel free to comment and let us know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos.